Hello, welcome to this video. I'm going to talk through the insertion and the measurement and the insertion of nasogastric tube for your NMC OSCE exam, clinical skills, or if you're a student nurse preparing for this in practice assessment as well. So there's a lot to do in, in the station if you're doing it for your exam, and there's a lot of key verbalisation and safety information. I'm just going to demonstrate the next measurement and inserting the tube, but we need to make sure with this procedure that we have fully explained it to the patient to gain consent that includes our rationale for inserting and what does actually inserting the nasogastric tube involve. Um, it is can be quite a distressing um intervention for patients so we need to make sure that they're aware of that but also the benefits of them having the nasogastric tube for whatever the reason nutrition or medication administration we there's some important pre-information that we need to give the patient so one is a range and a hand signal so ensuring that if they want us to stop at any time they can raise their hand and we can stop we need to get them in the right position, so a semi-upright position with their head supported um, with a pillow, so it doesn't flex too far forward or, or too far back or too far forward. Um, we'd also want to assess which nostril is clearest, so we'd want to get the patient to occlude one nostril and breathe in, um, and we'd want to go down the nostril that was most patent. We also need to verbalise in our exam and in clinical practice, we should have available working suction. The patient could gag and vomit as we're putting the tube down. So we'd want to make sure we can clear the airway if needed and also working oxygen because there is, is the risk of this tube going down into the airways whilst we're inserting, in which case we'd need to remove, but that could cause respiratory distress. So key information we need to verbalise before we um, actually um, put in this nasogastric tube. Okay, so you would have gathered your equipment, so your nasogastric tube, flammable nasogastric tube, your sterile water, um, which would be warm to lubricate your tube. You'd need a receptacle to give to the patient in case they feel sick. You'd need to cut your tape, so you've got two bits of tape to secure your tube, and you need your pH testing strips and your purple enteral um, syringe to aspirate your NG tube and check the position. You would also need PP for this station, so gloves and apron. I'm not wearing any today because I'm desperately trying to save the planet and reduce PPE use because it's quite um, hideous in um, OSCE training. But we'd have our PPE on as well. So we've done all the pre-information to the patient. Um, we've got all our equipment. We've done all our safety. And now we're going to do the next measurement. Okay, So the next measurement gives us a guide as to how far to insert the tube um, to ensure we are... Um, getting it um, anatomically um, in the stomach. So we want to measure it from, we call it the next measurement, so from the nose to the earlobe, and then we go down from the earlobe to the episternum, so here where we can see the bottom of the sternum here, and then we can add a further five centimetres to this, um, and that just secures that it's down below the diaphragm, so um, just trying to minimise the risk of it being positioned um, incorrectly. Once we've measured our next measurement, we'd want to lubricate our tube in our warm water, 15 to 20 centimetres, and we're going to get ready to insert the tube. So when inserting the tube, there's kind of two aspects to it. The first is inserting it along the floor of the nasopharynx, and then the next part is advancing it down the esophagus into the stomach. So the first part, um, we are advancing it kind of forward, um, backwards and inwards along the floor of the nasopharynx. So when we're doing this part of the insertion, we need to verbalise and be aware of any obstruction, okay? So if there is any obstruction, we would verbalise in the exam, or in practice, we would um, just slightly change the position of the tube, but if there was still obstruction, we would try the other nostril. So we're going to do that bit first, okay? So I've got Jenny here. So Jenny, I'm going to start inserting the tube. So I'm going along the floor, so backwards and inwards along the floor of the nasopharynx. If I experience any obstruction, I'm going to slightly change direction and try again. So once I'm in along the floor of the nasopharynx, I'm going to ask the patient to swallow. Swallowing closes the glottis and that um, minimises or helps the tube go down into the esophagus and not the trachea. Okay, so the big risk with this procedure is the tube going into the trachea and into the airways and not into the esophagus. Obviously, they run and side by side. So we want to ask the patient to swallow. So can you swallow for me now? 
And, you know, if they're able to and, uh, and it's safe for them to have sips of water, we can um, facilitate that as well with some water and a straw. So swallow for me. And as we advance and achieve now, we're getting them to swallow. It's going now going down the esophagus and into the stomach. But like I said, there's the risk of it going into the airway. So we need to verbalise that if there was any respiratory distress or any coughing at all, then we would um, immediately stop advance in this tube and we would remove that tube because that's a sign that it's gone into the airways once we've gone all the way um, into our position that we had measured we're going to secure the nut tube on the nose and we're going to secure the tube onto the cheek as well in your nmc exam you need to secure it in both Places. Once we've um, tube is in, we're going to get our purple mil, purple sixty mil syringe, and we would aspirate no more than five mils to check the stomach contents. And we place this onto our pH indicator strip, and we would confirm that the pH is less five point five or less to confirm it's in the stomach. And if it isn't, if it's more than 5.5, we would need to get a chest x-ray to confirm the position of the NG tube. We document this position down in the notes. And we'd also need to confirm that every time we go to give any feed, any medication, um, that we would recheck the position of the NG tube and make sure it hasn't moved.